Welcome to another Wichita Toy Train Club Lionel product review. I'm Zachary. Behind the camera we have Chris. And today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Heisler Steam Locomotive Logging Set. So before we take a close look at uh, Lionel's rendition of the Heisler, uh, a little bit of history. The Heisler was the last of three major types of geared steam locomotives. This was designed by Charles L. Heisler in 1891 when he built the prototype and received a patent for it in 1892. Uh, it was somewhat similar to the Climax. Heisler's design featured two steam cylinders uh, angled in at a 45 degree angle to uh, towards the center of the locomotive. There at the center, those uh, two cylinders uh, in a kind of a V-twin configuration powered a horizontal drive shaft that powered the uh, outward axles of each truck and then the inward axles were then powered by uh, the side rod, the external side rod connecting rods. In 1897 Heisler received a patent for a three truck locomotive like the one we have here where the uh, tender rode on the uh, third truck, kind of like the Class C Shays, and it was powered by the gearbox that powered the rear uh, axle on the locomotive. So the main shaft would uh, power the gearbox for this uh, rear axle, and then inside that it would come out as another drive shaft coming back to the tender. Uh, they uh, also, in that patent, received another patent for a four-cylinder design. Heislers were the fastest of the geared steam locomotives and still was claimed by their uh, builders to be the fast, uh, to uh, have the same uh, slow speed hauling capabilities. In Lionel's uh, three-truck Heisler uh, logging set, we have, of course, a three-truck Heisler steam locomotive. And then along with that, we have two uh, separate disconnect log cars. These are two separate trucks. We'll look at those a little bit closer later. A small flat car and a little disconnect boost. So some of the basic features on the set, the uh, locomotive, of course, has Lionel's legacy control system, meaning we can run it with legacy with Lionel's elder TMCC command system. Uh, with or run it conventionally with just a uh, transformer and some track. The uh, locomotive of course also features two fan driven smoke units, one for the uh, main stack and one for the whistle steam smoke effect. The locomotive also has two electrocouplers on the front and the rear of the uh, engine and it has Odyssey 2 speed control. The uh, cars are, of course, are the basic uh, Lionel disconnect cars, and they say they have a, a rib back on the wheels. Uh, there is kind of a molding, we'll kind of look at, look at that later. Now let's go in for a closer look at this set. Now looking at the front of the locomotive, right up front here, of course, we have our nice big O-gauge electrocoupler on the front of the locomotive. This can be fired from our Legacy or TMCC remote. Uh, kind of have a simulated wood decking down here on the front of the pilot. Of course, this whole thing is metal. This whole locomotive is a, a nice heavy die cast metal. Moving up, we have a separately applied coupler cup bar, a uh, grab iron that runs across the front of the locomotive. Moving up, we have these nice steps that lead up to the uh, side of the boiler. This platform here is completely smooth. There's no safety tread or anything, and there's nothing on the steps, if anyone was wondering. Uh, around the smoke box, we have these nice curved grab irons that start here and move all the way back towards the cab. And right up front here, we have a nice crisp uh, number plate on the front of the smoke box. And our smoke box door does open. If I can get a good grip on it, there we go. And inside here, since this is a small locomotive, Lionel had issues trying to find a good spot to, find, to hide all the switches. So right in here, we have our locomotive run program switch. So you can uh, program the locomotive with any legacy or team CC ID number. Moving up, we have our operational uh, headlight 
a nice bright LED headlight up top here. Now looking on the side of the locomotive, right up front here we have our first uh, powered truck. Again, this front axle here is the one that is powered, and this rear one is powered through the side connecting rod. Moving up, we have a nice looking uh, air pump right here. We got a little bitty uh, legible bilge plate that is uh, put on right here. And we have a bunch of separately applied uh, hangers and uh, pipes and so on and so forth. Some more other details right here. Right here is one of our two cylinders on the side of the locomotive. And moving back, we have a nice crisp number three and a uh, nice little white box go that goes around it and a number of rivets and so forth on around the uh, side of the cab. Right here we have our two steps, leads us up into the cab, and our rear uh, powered truck. So this rear axle here is the one that is powered, and our front one here is uh, powered from our side connecting rod. And uh, over here we have our uh, plate that goes from the front of the locomotive all the way back towards the cab, we have a nice crisp white strip that goes down the side of that. Now looking on the top of the locomotive, right up front here we have our big uh, stack up front here. And as usual, to add smoke fluid to it, we just pour it directly down the stack. Moving back, we have our uh, sand dome right here with a nice crisp number three on the side. Moving back, we have our uh, bell. This is a mechanical bell, so it would be uh, activated by either steam or air. So Lionel's kind of done that and where this, a lot of times the bell can swing back and forth in the cradle. Uh, this one is fixed. The actual brass piece seems a little loose, but that's just probably from the manufacturing, how they had to get that on there. Moving back, we have our steam dome. Right up here, we have our whistle. And right in the middle of our steam dome, we have a nice big gaping hole for the whistle steam smoke effect. And behind that, we got two little bitty uh, pop-off valves. Those might be kind of hard to see from your angle. Moving back, we have this nice big looking steam pipe that goes from the steam dome to either cylinder on the side of the locomotive. And back here, we have our little dynamo. Now this little dynamo kind of pops off. And that is where we will add our fluid for our whistle steam smoke effect, right down that little bit there. Put this back on. Moving back, we have the top of the cab. Top of the cab looks really nice, has a bunch of rivets and so forth on the top. And right here, our cab uh, vent opens up. And again, trying to find spots to put those switches. Right here, we have our on off switches for our two smoke units. The one on the engineer side of the locomotive is for our uh, main smoke stack and the one towards the fireman side is for our whistle steam uh, smoke unit. Moving back some more, back here we have our coal area of the locomotive and uh, it has a nice looking real coal load on the back. Moving back towards our tender, right here we can see all the jumble of stuff we have in between the uh, engine and tender. So first on the list here is our drive shaft and uh, we're not going to show you how to connect this. It'd be really kind of hard to videotape because it just involves a lot of hands in the way. But right down here, we have our drive shaft. That would be the first thing you would want to connect, connect is uh, uh, get that into the locomotive receiving end. Moving up, we have our draw bar. And uh, that would be your next thing to get connected. After you get that drive shaft lined up, that'll slide in there and then hook on your drive shaft. And then up top here, we have our... Uh, power for our tender. And since the tender is so small, it does have a pickup roller on it, so it does receive power, but that way, uh, with this uh, wire tether, that way it uh, creates a bigger electrical footprint for not only the tender with the sounds in it, but for the locomotive itself. That way, uh, you, know, you run over a switch or any, any little dead spots in the track, it doesn't go off and die on you. So that this, this connector here would be the last thing you would want to connect, because uh, it kind of keeps that drawbar from being able to accidentally kind of slide up and pop out. Uh, over here on the locomotive, you, we can see we have a little pipe right here. Uh, not sure exactly what that was for, but we have a nice little looking pipe there. Moving back to the uh, actual tender, we have a nice crisp Heisler down the middle of it. The whole side of the tender is smooth. There's no rivets or anything, 
We have a nice uh, white square box back here. And down here we have our powered uh, truck uh, that the tinter sits on. So this axle back here is the one that is powered from the drive shaft. And then this front axle here is powered from the side connecting rod. All right, moving back on the uh, tinder. Right back here, we have our nice big electro, uh, O-scale electro coupler that can be fired from the Legacy or TMCC remote. Down here, we have our uh, metal, uh, metal piece that goes across. It's kind of got some simulated wood ribs on the bottom of that. Moving up, we have uh, some gra uh, grab irons and a separately applied coupler cup bar right there. And again, there's another big solid uh, grab iron that goes down the, the back of the locomotive. The, uh, in the middle of the back here, we have a nice little uh, detail that's added on here with a nice crisp three on the back. And we have a nice little separately applied uh, ladder right here. On either side of the back of the tender, we have a nice little separately applied grab iron. Moving up, we have a nice looking uh, reverse light on the top there with a little number three on the side. On the top of the tender, we have, it's a completely uh, flat top. Over here in this little toolbox, this will pop open. Kind of hard to see, probably down in there. But down in there is our volume pod for the master volume control for the locomotive. And over here underneath this water hatch, it does open. It, be honest, that hinge didn't seem to be the greatest. It's just got a little rod put through it and bent on each side. For whatever reason, it just seems loose and jerky compared to a lot of the other ones I see Lionel do, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, it's got a little magnet on it that keeps it shut, and it seems to be that originally the, uh, this might be an older K-line, I don't know if it's K-line tooling or if it's just a, in general an older Lionel tooling, and uh, they originally had a uh, signal, a, uh, let's see, what does it say again, a rail or signal switch in there, so that originally with some of the older Team CC or Legacy engines that would switch between just having the whistle and the bell and some of the uh, user activated announcements just having those on or being able to have all that along with the background sounds. Uh, so we have the spot for that switch but that switch actually isn't there. Just kind of interesting. All right now we got the uh, locomotive flipped over. And as we can see, we have uh, our uh, drive shaft that comes down the side here. So we have a universal joint here and then uh, kind of a, a sliding deal there. That way our truck can turn. And same thing back here. We have another universal and a couple other universals back here. And that keeps, you know, that allows our drive shaft to be able to move and everything. Right here is where our two cylinders come into play from the side of the locomotive. And right here, where those two toolboxes were on the side, is kind of just looks like it's a, a, a holding bearing for the, uh, for the shaft. That's actually where our uh, electric motor is pulled into play for, the, uh, uh, for this model. And that moves back. And as you can see, we only drive the outward axle of each truck. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, as usual, when you pull this locomotive out of the box, it's probably a good idea to put a, put a little bit of oil everywhere. Um, anywhere you find a uh, metal axle going through like a, a brass bushing or uh, going into that uh, gearbox, it's always a good idea to put a little bitty dab of oil in there. Some of these uh, universal joints, a little bit of universal joints and uh, so forth might be a good idea to kind of keep an eye on them. Uh, just kind of, uh, you know, where those, uh, any, anywhere where there's metal going through metal. Uh, just always a good idea to maybe put a little bitty dab of oil, especially on our side rods out here. And that will, uh, of course, kind of extend the life of our locomotive and uh, keep any, uh, keep any squeaking out of it. Uh, nobody likes a squeaking engine. It's kind of crazy at times. And as usual, we have our one pickup roller on the locomotive, so we always want to put a little bit of oil on it as well, because it will squeak. Okay, moving back, here we have our kind of our tender uh, engine area 
this is our rear uh, locomotive truck and here's our tender truck and again just like the uh, locomotive here's that outward axle it's powered from our drive shaft and our inward axle is powered from the side rod uh, one thing I did forget to note on the engine is this inner axle here is our one axle with the rubber traction tires so back here uh, we have a, another uh, center rail pickup roller and just like uh, our, our other two trucks on the engine back here we want again make sure we put some oil on every uh, any moving metal parts uh, again always keeps uh, the engine running nice and smooth for the rest of its life right here we have our circuit board for the uh, Lionel center track so this locomotive is capable with the LCS uh, center track system okay now we've uh, moved to our disconnect cars so right here we have the two long cars that come with the set and uh, as we can see these are kind of just uh, straight up trucks so they got uh, two couplers on them actually and uh, for uh, both of the cars this first uh, long and truck set that we have we went ahead and put the little chains that come with the uh, the set on them and that is i will say a royal pain to do uh i mean you just uh, got to be able uh, got to be patient to uh, put those on there the actual lo uh, logs there's two spears that kind of stick up from each truck pop this one off real quick like we got back here and uh uh, now I won't be able to get that back on. I'll do that later. Um, but that kind of keeps that log on there. And then the uh, strap uh, is kind of our our look from uh, that would actually hold it on on the uh, prototype. Uh, I think the chain the chain is the only thing that actually keeps the log on the truck. So if you pick just pick the log up, uh, it's just going to do that. It's going to pick up right from from the truck itself. Um, all of these couplers are dummy couplers. They are non-operating O-scale couplers. Uh, they are very easy uh, to change to scale couplers if you so choose. And the uh, the trucks themselves are uh, just kind of kind of your basic truck uh, looking back here. And they do have one spring on them. Uh, it kind of might be kind of hard to see, but they actually are uh, very well nicely sprung. You know, most cars are sprung, but you're never gonna I mean there's never enough weight there to actually push down on those springs on these they actually really do uh, compress a little bit and just enough to uh, hopefully keep uh, give that a nice smooth ride if you ever so wish to uh, go outside find uh, find a nice looking branch or so and cut it up and put it on here uh, all you would have to do is put holes in there for the uh, these two spears here in the middle of course and uh, Lionel's made those chains a little bit longer. That way, if it just happens to be a little bit bigger than their plastic ones they give you, uh, of course, you'll still be able to tie those down. Okay, so now moving back to our two smaller cars. Again, we have that same basic truck, uh, truck uh, design here with our uh, dummy O-scale couplers. Uh, this flat car here has a nice looking uh, wood decking that goes across there. We have some little plastic uh, holders that kind of go up to hold whatever load you might want to put on there. Back here, I didn't show it on the uh, log cars, but they are on the log cars. It's just a, a little brake wheel, and it's actually uh, loose, so you could spin it if you wanted it to. Of course, I can't get a good grip on it now. There we go. It does spin. It doesn't screw out or anything, but it does spin. Kind of an interesting touch. Uh, on all the sides of our caboose, we have that same kind of wood paneling look to it. And we have some uh, separately applied uh, grab irons, metal grab irons on there. A uh, nice looking door right here with a clear plastic wind, uh, insert in the door and a little window on each side. And the door does not open, it's completely sealed off. The interior of the caboose actually is not lighted, so it's completely dark. Um, there is a, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Uh, right back here we have our uh, uh, smoke exhaust from our uh, little fireplace on the inside there and there is a little uh, wood fired stove in there detail in there and also in the middle of it there's a uh, little table there in the middle so you could uh, if you could get that to uh, this top off you could completely decorate the interior of that caboose okay I kind of flipped over the uh, 
our flat car here just to kind of show you what the bottom looks like on the bottom here is where we got our uh, product number with our uh, built by Lionel 2017 on the bottom printed on the bottom there uh, as usual again uh, just like the engine we always want to make sure we put a little dab of oil where that metal axle goes through uh, our brass bushing and I said earlier that these are compatible with scale couplers and all you have to do for that is pull this screw out here this dummy coupler will come out put any uh, knuckle scale coupler in of your choice and put that screw back in a uh, real simple setup there for you okay here we got uh, three com uh, separate uh, disconnect cars that you can buy each of these separately for this set um, you can buy more log cars separately uh, I believe so as well so uh, these are again that same platform uh, just uh, another little add-on detail you can have uh, and make your train a little bit longer I did uh, did forget to note with those other cars those trucks have some weight to them so these cars for as small as they are they ha they have some weight going for them okay uh, we got her sitting on the track and we'll go ahead and uh, fire her up and uh, listen to some of the sounds real quick note uh, this is uh, on the start of Lionel's trend to not put any uh, legacy engine modules in with the locomotive so you have to manually go in and uh, add everything with uh, that all the information for the locomotive in the legacy system it's not terribly complicated it, it's not the easiest thing to do though either it would be really nice if they still sent those in, uh, memory modules but if you have an LCS center track run this engine over that and uh, the tr sensor track will program the legacy base with all the uh, features as well so uh, that is a uh, another option uh, we might do an, uh, another video later on kind of showing how all that works uh, but for this uh, this sake uh, I think Lionel has a video out on how to show that and uh, there should be some information in with your legacy system and or the locomotive itself so let's go ahead and fire her up Okay, let's go ahead and listen to our whistle. It might be kind of hard to see still as our smoke units are still warming up, but uh, we did get a little bit of steam out our whistle uh, port. Here's the bell. And here's some of the crew talk. Yardmaster, we're ready. Are we clear to pull? Over. Negative. Please hold. Over. Yes, sir. Standing by. Out. This is the tower. The lead is all clear. Over. Thank you much. I've got clearance to pull. Out. That was our uh, other side. I didn't say it before I did it, but that was our uh, filling. Obviously, our fill, our fill water into the tender effect. Here's our uh, coal loading uh, sounds. My coal is full. Out. Here is uh, the sound for the uh, steam blowdown effect. And that's all our sounds. Okay, now we've gone through all the sounds. Uh, go ahead and put it in sequence control. And we'll go ahead and take her for a spin around the layout.
Okay, now that we've taken the set for a spin around the layout, uh, you kind of see uh, everything about the locomotive and the cars and you know, the cars that pulls behind it. That uh, logging car looks really nice with the chain around it. Didn't put it around the second one because uh, we're just back, uh, boxing it back up after the review. So uh, just kind of show, show you how that chain looks around it. Uh, I think the uh, engine ran great. Uh, wonder, uh, wonderful smoke and sounds. Uh, one, note, one note the sounds, it did seem a little quiet. It is a small tender uh, to keep in mind. But they did seem a little on the quiet side to me compared to the other ones. But uh, like, like I said, this, it's, a sm it's a small engine. Small tender kind of restricts you on the kind of sounds you can put in there. What did you think, Chris? I thought it was a great engine. I mean, one of my favorite parts is all the moving parts on it and how much time that Lionel has put and how much effort they've put into making all that work together and run smoothly and operate nice and look real great while the engine is going around the layout. All right, yeah. Uh, wonderful looking uh, locomotive and uh, set. Okay, uh, some of the uh, last little bit about the set. Uh, one thing I did forget to note, we didn't show you the inside of the cab, really kind of hard to get to. Uh, there is some nice separately applied details and so forth in there. Uh, like I said, it's just really hard to get the camera to, so uh, just a quick note on there, that's why we didn't show that. Uh, this uh, set was last cataloged in Lionel's 2016 Volume 2 catalog, and it goes for uh, $1,400, or 1450 sorry. Kind of odd number there, but uh, it goes for uh, $1,450, uh, if that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, if you go through any good Lionel dealer, probably could have got a pretty good discount on that retail price. Uh, might be a couple dealers out there still with these sets. This concludes our review of the uh, Lionel Heisler uh, logging train set. Uh, be sure to uh, like us on Facebook for all of our uh, notifications on our train shows and our open hours here in Wichita, Kansas. And be sure to hit that subscribe, that subscribe button there on YouTube. So that way you get all the notifications when we send out more uh, product reviews and uh, running train videos. Thanks for watching.